Hey guys, it's Andrew with GY6Vids. We're back again with another heads up review of two pistols that are very, very popular in the concealed weapons community. The Glock 43 and the Springfield XDS. There is no doubt in my mind that we all understand they're both very reliable. Between Springfield and between Glock, they both make very reliable firearms. We don't have to throw these guns to the mud, we don't have to throw it off a, out of a truck or drag it behind a car to prove anything. Obviously, with enough effort, you can break pretty much anything. I wanna show you the stone cold facts about measurements between these two guns to show you how similar they really are. A lot of people in the firearms community are comparing the MMP Shield to the Glock 43, but in actuality, when it comes to measurements, the XDS is much closer. Now, both these firearms come with extended magazines. Now, the extended magazines have a little extension on the bottom of the mag. The difference is with the Glock magazines, you're not gaining any magazine capacity. You're just gaining a little bit more pinky extension for better grip and purchase on the gun. But with the XDS, you're not only getting a little bit more length on the grip for a better purchase on the firearm, but you're also getting more mag capacity. But as the flush mags go, you're looking at 6 plus 1 in the Glock 43 magazine, while you're looking at 7 plus 1 in the XDS magazine. Now, these will fit flush with the guns, and it's not going to change anything on your purchase of your firearm but you are getting still plus one in the XDS magazine. So, so far with mag capacity, the XDS wins. Now let's get into the fact of the simple grip of the firearm. The texture of the grip of the Glock 43 is next to nothing, but you do have a lot more real estate for stippling. The key to that is having a somewhat flat surface that you can sand down and then stipple the way you want to. Uh, with this Glock 43, gives you a lot of room for that because you can just quickly sand down this next to nothing texture and then do your stippling from there. With the XDS, it comes stock with a very aggressive, rigid texture on the grip. God, it's like Raptor scales or something. I don't know what the heck they thought of when they did this, but it's pretty aggressive. I mean, I'd rather have more grip on my gun than less. The pro is you automatically get it and you don't have to do any extra work. The downside is, is if you want to stipple, you're going to have to stand the crap out of this thing just to be able to get it flat enough to start stippling. But the pro that leans towards the XDS in this case is the fact that there is no reversible backstrap or changeable backstrap on the Glock 43. With the XDS, you have reversible backstraps. It comes with the whole system. If you pop out this back pin and you have a smaller or thicker section, you can put into the back of the back strap. The Glock 43 has your standard sight setup, but you have white on white. And when it comes to a concealed weapon, in my opinion, I like to have something that's a little bit off color, different color in the front, different color in the back. With the XDS, you have a dovetail system in front and back, but the front comes standard with a red fiber optics. So you have a red fiber optic in the front and then two white dots in the back, but obviously they both have optional sights on the market now. So if you wanted to change them out, you can. That's just another out of the box pro and con. So this next thing that's the difference between these two firearms with pros and cons is the weight difference. The Glock 43 stomps the XDS when it comes to weight loss. Now what you gotta consider is with the XDS, you're looking at 4.5, roughly 4.5, 4.6 ounces heavier in weight uh, compared to the Glock 43, but also, every magazine you're gonna load in this thing, whether it be the flush mag or the extended mag, you're gonna get plus one or plus two rounds of nine millimeter in this gun. So that's gonna increase your weight even more. So you gotta consider that fact. Your weight difference between these two guns, if you're a minimalist and you want the lightest gun possible, Glock 43 stomps the crap out of the XDS. Now the breakdown of these guns, obviously in Glock is one of the kings of speed takedowns. You can take this thing down, clean it, put it back together, probably faster than most guns out in the market. The XDS is very standard as well. They're both fairly fast, and unless you're looking in a really crappy situation where you have a jam and you gotta take everything down, I mean, highly unlikely, but it is a factor that it's still Glock is uh, king of the cage when it comes to simplicity. I mean, it's just a brick and it does what Glocks do and nothing fancy about it. So you have the reliability aspect and the ease of takedown and maintenance. So there's a win in my category for the Glock. But the XDS is still very fast, so I'm not downing the XDS's maintenance or reliability at all. I'm just saying in this case, winner winner on this side. But as far as these two triggers go, from what I can tell with shooting, is the XDS, I have just as much time behind both guns, and I've done a lot of research on this to figure out what I think is the difference between the two triggers. The difference between these two is the Glock 43 is gonna have a faster reset. So as you pull that trigger and you let up a little bit, the trigger's gonna reset faster than the XDS. The difference is the break on the Glock 43, when the gun eventually goes off, it's more abrupt. 
But with the XDS, you have a longer reset, so it takes a little bit longer time for it to reset for the next trigger pull. But once it breaks, it's really crisp. It's just tink, and the gun barely moves. But the trigger on the XDS, it's crisp, but it's running about roughly 6.14 pounds of trigger pull. Uh, and I'm going off this Lyman trigger pull gauge. Glock claims that this gun's got a 5.5 pound trigger pull. Not the case. Um, I've done numerous pulls out of the Lyman trigger pull gauge and it's coming at about 6.10 to 6.11 pounds of trigger pull compared to their claimed 5.5 pounds. And it's just not. Um, it's, that's extremely off from the, the truth about this. And you can do it yourself. If you don't believe me, you don't have to. Do research yourself. There's a little bit more poundage behind the XDS, but not by much. So in that case, you don't have to worry too much about trigger pull poundage. You just want to worry about the reset and then the trigger break. Let's shoot some targets, let's have some fun, and wrap up this video. We're just going to do double taps to see how the first shot and second shot follow up on each other with the recoil of the gun. Neither one of these guns have more time on than the other, so it's got them at the same time. I want to thank actionfirearmsflorida.com. They're the ones I got the firearms from. Great prices on the guns. I go to them a lot when it comes to certain firearms I need. That is their logo. Go say hi. Tell them you saw them on GY6 vids. We have six rounds in each mag, even though the XDS mags hold a little bit more. I'm putting only six in each one to keep it fair for the Glock mag. Um, Want to make sure we're staying consistent. Not bad. Pushing out. Not bad. Pushing out. Not bad. I like the grouping on this. All right. Moving on, let's do the flush mag with the XDS now. The flush mag and the XDS, see how it feels. Drawing out in target. A little bit low. Let's see if I bring the shots up. The separation of the shot though I like is just a little bit low. Moving on. Good shot placement, I like it. They're less spread. Let's see what the last two look like. A <laughs> Little bit rushed, I put that one low on target. So there's a shot and another shot, about the same spread, just a little bit low. I just gotta bring my shots up, but overall the grouping is looking consistent and the trigger pull is a little bit less rough. Another side note about this XDS in that situation, is you have ambidextrous mag releases. So on both sides you have a mag release and for an ambidextrous shooter like myself, that is all the difference. You can just use your thumb rather than having to use your index on the opposing side. Uh, I shoot both left and right, but having to be able to knock that thumb in there is nice. Even though I like both of them and I would have no problem or a single hesitation to carry either one of them, but if I had to pick one, it would have to go with the XDS. Uh, both Glock and Springfield are very durable firearms. Um, longevity, versatility and reliability, they're all there for both of these guns. And the measurements are so dang close that there's really no need to go off of the size aspect of it except for weight. As far as I'm concerned, better trigger, better sights, stock, obviously you can replace them with a Glock 43, but you're also getting stainless steel mags, they release and drop free easier, you have reversible back straps that can be changed out. Out of the box, this is out of the box, I'm going to take the XDS, no doubt. So that's my opinion. Let me know what your opinion is in the comment section and make sure to have an opinion that's backed up by facts. I, I obviously agree there is no doubt in my mind Glock makes one of the best firearms when it comes to reliable pistols. But there's also a lot of people that are Glock fanboys or fangirls that will just pick Glock no matter what without looking at the details. But have facts. Tell me what you like about it and why. It's, this is good information. Use the comment section to help people. Don't belittle people. Don't start cussing and calling people idiots. That's not what this is about. This is the gun community, so you want to help boost each other up, give people information, make them more knowledgeable, and it helps to have another soldier in the fight that actually has true facts to back up their knowledge when it comes to supporting their Second Amendment rights. You need to contact me if you've got any information you want to ask, any questions you want to see behind the scene footage, head over to the social media outlets, instagram.com forward slash gy6vids, facebook.com forward slash gy6vids. That'll help you get onto my social media network and be able to see the upcoming videos that are coming and behind the scenes footage as well. And you can shout out and talk to me a little bit behind the scenes. I check that private information more often than I do YouTube information because there's so much of it. So look forward to talking to you guys. Hope you appreciate it. And as always, subscribe to GY6 Vids on YouTube. I will see you next time.
I am sweating like a champ. Like a midget at a urinal. I'm just not quite comfortable right now. 